I can have $100 in my account every week faithfully. It don't matter. I can have three lockers in the dorm every single day of the week filled with canteen and it don't matter. I can have three people to five people each week that pay me faithfully and it doesn't matter. You know why? Cause I want what you got. Well, hold down, man. Suitcase this. My cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing. You gonna get it. Next time I see you ass, you gonna leave airlifted. What's up, y'all? Y'all already know, man. K Frog TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you can see it first. And make sure your bell is on all, not personalized, because YouTube be, you know, swip swapping people's things the way they ain't getting notifications. All right. Today I'm speaking on extortion. Yeah, I said it. Extortion. It goes down, especially down here in the state of Florida in prison. And I'm going to break it down to y'all and let y'all know the ins and the outs of how that shit can go. If you don't like it, leave. If you do, tune in because you know we're going to keep that shit 100. Nothing but real spill over here. All right? When it comes down to this extortion game, it don't matter what race you are. You could be white, black, Spanish, Puerto Rican, purple, whatever it is you want to be. You could be an alien from a different country, a different universe. And you will still get pressed and be extorted. I don't care if you're a little scrawny person that's only four foot three, or if you're a tall, 500 pound, built like a rock, six foot 12 person. It don't mean nothing. Your ass can still be extorted, okay? And I'm gonna break it down and let you know why. Because in prison, people don't pick faces. People don't care who you associate with, who you affiliated with. If they want what you got, they're gonna take it. And that's facts. All right. If you ain't got any type of face card or no pool against these other inmates, they're going to take advantage because they see things in everyone. And what it is they see? Money. Anything that has to do with money that they see in you, they want. And that is facts. It won't matter how many jacks they have in the dorm, how much canteen they already have, how much money's already in their damn books. How much people they have paying them. If they want what you got, they're going to try to get it. Okay? You can play the big bad role all you want and you're only going to get so far. And that's facts. Your best bet is to make sure that you stand on your own ten toes and you put on anywhere you go. Because anywhere you land, it is possible that you can be extorted. All right? The camps I've been at, I've seen people put down on the biggest people and make them break it off. I seen Barry Sanders, the football player's brother's son, which is Barry's nephew, break it off every single week while I was at Calhoun CI. Facts. Okay? Because they knew who his uncle was. They know he had that check. Now, there's different ways for them to extort you. They can blackmail you. You know, basically like say they know where your routes are to where you get everything on the compound. To where every, everywhere you get shit, whatever officers you got up under your wing on your payroll. They know that. They can press you with it and let you know, look, bro, we're going to put it out there. We're going to put you on blast, boy. I want this much each week. Or they could just be on some shit like you want to go home to your family, right? Do you? You want to go home to your family, right? You got a family out there you love, right? You got kids, right? And they'll just try to threaten you like that with extortion. Or they could play like they're your friend. They can act out like they're sticking up for you with other people, but be around them same people when you're not around, talking behind your back, letting them know, boy, I got me a mean paymaster. I got me a mean jug. You feel me? And that's what goes on every single day in prison. It goes down about that extortion game. The JIT camps, some of them got closed down down here in the state of Florida because of the extortion. They lowered the money first to where you weren't allowed to get as much as you normally were. They made it a smaller amount because people was getting extorted. They were taking that shit and there was nothing they could do about it. When I was at Calhoun, I was in G-Dorm, Gangland, G-Block, okay? And all went, that went on there was extortion, all right? You'll be new to the compound. You'll get placed in A-Dorm, which is orientation, where everyone goes when they first get there. Then after you get your job and everything and they tell you where you're going to be working at, they're going to separate you all around on the pound. Now you're not hanging out with the same people you came there with. Now you're like a lone fish, boy. You out there in that water now. Okay, they're going to throw you where you're going. And anyone that was under the age of 25 came to G-Dorm where I was at. You got G1 and G2, the number one extortion house. You come in there, first thing they're going to do, T-O-H, off-rip. And this is an adult camp I'm talking about. 
They're going to TOH you off rip. You can, you can survive your TOH. You can, you, can, you can last the fight and everything like that. But a lot of them won't even make it to the TOH because they fold under pressure and they decide to break it off and pay rent and be extorted before they even get in the grid. Okay, now say you went to the grid, you held your own, you know, you got in there, you did what you had to do. Say you, you, you know, you did your thing. Does that mean people ain't going to fuck with you? Does that mean that you're, you're spared? People ain't going to try to extort you? Nah, that just means the ones you put on in front of respect that. But some of their brothers might not. Someone might be in confinement. You don't even know right now. That's going to get out of confinement and come in that dorm and flip the whole dorm. Change the whole dorm around. You just ain't been seen yet by the eyes of the person who's hunting, looking for you. Who don't even know he's looking for you yet. And it doesn't matter what they already have. They want what you got. I can have a honey bun. Five other people can have honey buns. But for some reason, boy, you're about to go get a honey bun at that canteen window. And your honey bun looks more tastier than the honey bun I got. I'm just speaking facts. I'm just breaking it down. I want people to know that it is no joke when you go to prison. And this is coming from someone that has real footage that made it look like it was a playground. You feel me? It's not like that. It isn't to where you're going to just be able to walk in there and think shit's sweet. No matter where you go, if someone wants to press that shit and extort you, they will. I've seen people get extorted from inside the box. You ain't even on the compound. You're secured away from other inmates and still getting extorted. I seen people that went to Vizzo that would pack their ass and come back to the dorm and they had it to where all the gangs met up on Vizzo day and he had to go there and meet them and break them all off with some. And then if he didn't pay that gang and that gang was after him, all the other gangs would protect him against that gang. So you got all these gangs rising, going to war for one dude because he's paying them all. He's, he's being extorted by all of them because it's a quick, easy come up. And people going to always try to get you. And like I said in my song, Chain Gang Robbery. If I want it, finna take it. Give it up, there's no debating. See, blood of my eyes, that's what it is. Because a nigga been walking with Satan. Staying out my sights where you ought to be. I walk a nightmares with the call of me. Give it up, give it up, and no stopping me. This is what you call Chain Gang Robbery. Okay? That song right there, if you haven't heard it, go check it out. Because you can learn majority of the shit in prison just in that song alone. I talk about people getting extorted from the box. I talk about the whole nine. People breaking in the lockers, stealing. Every single thing that goes on in prison is in that song, Chain Gang Robbery. All right? And it doesn't matter who you know. It doesn't matter none of that. Because people go against the grain on their own kind. You think they won't go against the grain over someone who isn't a part of them? So at any given time, you never want someone in your game room fully. Because the extortion shit is real. It was so real that when I was at Calhoun, them officers would come around. And if you didn't have a receipt from within the last 24 hours for every single thing that is in your locker, they were confiscating it and making you throw it inside the laundry cart. Because it was known as an extortion house. Especially G2 where I laid my head at. For eight months, I was in that dorm. Just like that. People come in, you know what I'm saying, and everyone's betting on the fight. Oh, make them fight each other, betting bags of coffee. As soon as they come in, the officers would tell them, uh, do y'all gangbang? And, and no one's going to really tell the officers, yeah. So they'd be like, no, no, sir. Well, look, most likely when you go in here, you're going to have to pay rent. Yeah. Let them know off rip they're going to be extorted. I can't name how many times I've seen people walk in, put their bags down, and go check in. Go on. Because extortion is real, okay? People can finesse you, act like they're your friend. They can buy you shit from canteen, buy you food to cook. Check this out. They can buy food and cook and everything and hang out with you like they're your dog and all this stuff. And then someone come at you and try to rob you. Someone come at you and try to rob you for like $30, $40 a canteen that's in your locker. This other person could jump up and act like they're saving you. And shit like that. So you feel pretty good or whatever. You know, he saved you. That's your dog. But now he's telling you he want 15. He want half of what them dudes was coming to get. If not, he going to send word. And now you're looking at him like, bro, I thought you was my dog. Ain't none of that. Let me get that. Let me get that. 
Straight up. First thing they gonna say to you when you walk in the dorm. What's up, bro? You bang? Nah. Nah? Alright. Well, look. This gangland. You feel me? This G-block. See them boys over there in the corner looking at you? He gonna look over there. Yeah. yeah, them my dogs over there. You feel me? They don't like your swag. They don't like your style. You feel me? So I figured I'd come over here and holler at you first. See what you about before they come over here and try to eat you. I'm just being real with you. That's how people will come press you and talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Just to let them know like, shit. 60 40. You get $100 worth each week down here in the state of Florida. 60 40. That means we get 60, you keep 40. And there is literally people in prison that pay that shit weekly that got hella time to do. And no matter where they go or no matter who is getting it from them, if the person who was extorting them goes to confinement, man, that person's brothers or homeboys know about it. So when he goes, Swoop. There's someone else. So, hey, bro, that payment ain't stopped because what's his name ain't here no more. You already know what time it is, boy. There's people hungry in there waiting for people who have people that they extort. You know, wait for that person to get transferred to go to confinement or any of that. That boy could go to confinement. Why is in the confinement? There's goons on the compound running down on you collecting to send a portion to that person in the box. He's paying other people to come collect from you. And then he could get transferred. Scoop, gone. Next thing you know, everyone knew you was a paymaster to that person. Now they coming at you. They trying to extort you too. They like, boy, look, it ain't. And then as soon as you tell them, nah, bro, it ain't nothing like that, man. Listen, bro. Uh, that, mm -hmm, you know what time it is. Look, bro, I ain't even here to talk with you, bro. This ain't no chit chat. This ain't, we, we ain't cool. You feel me? I already know what time it is with you, bro. All right? So you either going to break that shit off. I want the same amount, boy. I'm just going to get you up out of here. And then they going, no one's going to want to get wet up over that. And they ain't going to hurt them none because they've been paying it for the last two years. So next thing you know, they're going to, all right, no problem, no problem. That's what it is. That's when you put down on them, like, you know, violently. Like, boy, that's what it is. You know, up on them. They see that shiny shit, they know to get it up. Extortion is something that goes on and you better be ready for it. For anyone who wants to live that thug life and go to prison, because that's what comes with thugging, just be prepared for someone to press you on extortion. Just be prepared now and say, K for all told you. I don't care how many people you beat up on the streets, how many guns you done busted, how many people you done wet, whatever it may be. Up that road is a different story. And up that road, if you ain't got no respect, you got to earn it first. And then if you ain't got none, boy, your ass is deer meat. Straight deer meat. And that's, that's what it is. So just be prepared for it. Not saying you can't get through it, because I got through it. I never had no one extort me. Thank God. And I put that shit on anything in the world I love. Not one time did K-Frog get extorted by no one. Because I was a dummy. I was a dummy. To where, like, they know what time it is. And then, I've never been pressed like that, no nothing. But what makes me different from other people? Nothing. Nothing makes me different from other people. But the one thing that did make me different where I went is no one was willing to take risks. I was. So when I was there and I started putting the shit together, making different routes and everything like that, I made it to where a lot of people can make money. But they better have their money up front first to invest with Frog. That's what made it to where, oh, now nah, he's straight. He's good. Yeah, because I opened up a way for different people. But it doesn't mean they got shit for free. They still had to come out the pocket and pay for what they wanted. They still had to invest their money in order to get it. You understand? Ain't no freebies. Ain't no freebies on the streets when you're dealing with, you know, licks and bases on the streets when you grow up as a hustler. So what's the difference from the chain game? Nothing. That's why when I open up these doors and I started finding different routes and making things possible to where different people can, you know, do they want to. Everybody fuck with me. And anytime I got an altercation, I never called nobody for help. I did what I had to do on my own. And I stood alone. It didn't matter if I went to a, a different dorm on the whole other side of the compound. As soon as I get in there, boy, it was nothing but respect from all gang members. Because I'm white. I'm unaffiliated. I wasn't scared to rock out. I put on for my damn hood. And I wasn't with that extortion shit at all. Now, at Charlotte... There wasn't really that many extortions. There was more robberies. Like I speak on in the song Chain Gang Robbery. It was more like, I want that shit, let me get it. And they would, they would take the risk of robbing. But when I was at Calhoun, 
There was literally yearly extortions. I'm talking about where you get your ID, it's got your name on there and all that. That's like your credit card. I've known people who literally had other inmates' ID. So when it rolls around, they don't even have to communicate. And that other dude was a playmaker on the compound. Everybody fought with him. He was a gang member. Nobody even knew that he had two IDs. He had the ID he uses, and he had a backup ID that he told them they lost, that they never deactivated, though. So that way, the person he was paying rent to could go hit the window first. Woo! Yep, 50. Let me get that 50. Fifth dawn. That's what they call it. Fifth dawn. Let me get that fifth dawn off there. Yes. You feel me? And then he was a gang member. He was, everyone loved him, thought he was 100 and everything like that. And I was in the dorm with the same person who would swipe Monday, skirt, first and take 50. And he, no one even knew that gang member was paying someone else rent. It being extorted by someone else. That's how real it is. People could find your ID. People could steal your ID when you're not looking. Go hit that canteen window. There's a damn, the dude that works in the canteen window are inmates. Tell them, look, what's on there, bro? You know I'm not allowed to swipe someone else's ID without them here. Look, bro, what's on there? Whatever's on there, I give you half. Canteen man, look, all right, there's 80. All right, 40, 40, bust it down. What canteen man ain't going to bust it down? There is no way in hell he's going to give up that $40. He going to take that. He going to be like, oh, I call that. There's no way for you to find out where your ID was used at, which window, which person did it. You could go report it, do all you want. Nothing is going to happen. They're not going to give you your money back. Your money will not be reimbursed. Anything like that, you got got. Okay, that's when people take your IDs and shit like that. People will literally come by and swipe your shit. That's what it is. But when it comes to that extortion game, I've seen people literally put lists on people's beds. Like what, man, what this is, you know what it is. Straight up, you want to live in here, boy? You, I already know what time it is, boy. You go get that. Straight up. And like I said in my videos before, you can see it in someone's face if they're expecting money or not. So it's like you don't want to jump the gun and press them too much to make them check in. Because if he checks in, you ain't going to get nothing out of him. Right? You ain't going to sit here and worry about getting him while he's in the box if you ain't got nothing up out of him before. Unless you know he's a paymaster. Once you know he's a paymaster, if he's going to drop 100 in your account every week and drop 100 on his for him to have and shit like that, then it's like, of course you want to keep him at close reach. You feel me? That's what people do. But you can literally sit back like this and watch the window and tell by people when they go to get their card checked and they come and they be like, oh, he's upset. He's dep that means he was expecting something. You feel me? Other than him just going up and boom. You know, like you could just tell in their face expressions if they're expecting money, if the money's late, if it was supposed to be there today, but maybe they didn't drop it by six o'clock or eight o'clock. So it's coming tomorrow. All that. You could tell when people are ready. They put the canteen bag in their back pocket. They have a list in their hand. All that. You could tell who's going to hit the window. That's when the people make they move and put down on them. And the way they do it at first is they'll do it in a friendly manner. They'll tell you they'll make a deal with you. They'll tell them like, hey, look, bro, oh, you finna hit the window? All right, look, check this out. Uh, grab me two honey buns and two soups. When we come back in, I'm gonna give you the, uh, such and such, such and such. What I'm giving you costs more than that. And it will probably cost more, but they just wanna see if you have money on your account. They just wanna see if you're willing to open that door to, you know, do business with them. And now you go do it. You go out there, you get something that costs $3 and give it to them. They gave you something that costs three seventy. dollars Boop. You might not hear nothing from them. Y'all might not even communicate or nothing. Next week, there's a list on your bed with a canteen bag laying there. They tell you, look, this is what time it is. I know you get that check. Because every month, every month, the officers come around around mail call and they hand out your monthly canteen slip to show how much money you've had dropped. You see what I'm saying? You get one of them every single month. So people can tell if yours was eaten. People can tell how much you had in the last month, the month before, all that. So it shows, oh, 800, 800, 800. So it shows you always get one of those. And then people, will sh it'll show how much money's in your account now, how much money was in your account, when your account was used. Shows all that. It breaks it all down like a bank statement. So people see shit like that. People see that. They be laying on the ground. People will ball them up, throw them in the trash. Someone will come around, pick it up, look at it. Oh, boy, that boy got money in there. You know, things like that. Everybody acts real fishy with it. And the ones that do that is the ones that you know got that check. That's why there's a lot of extortion going on. 
And like I said, it doesn't matter how much food I already have. It doesn't matter how many people in here also are being extorted. It doesn't matter how much money I have on my books. I want what you got. That's the only difference. And that's what people see in their mind. You feel me? They look at it like I'm in here, my life on the line. Everything I done been through, everyone I done fought, stood my ground, made it to where no one can extort me, none of that shit. Can't no one extort someone that's an extorter. That's what people think. But it's possible. But that's what people, a lot of people will think. Oh, he's extorting people. But that prevents it from someone that will really put that pressure on his ass to break it off. That'll make it to where he's in the clear. Because they look at it like, oh, he's a robber. He's a goon. That's what a lot of people be doing. It's just a precaution. Because I done seen so many people who were extorting the weak. Taking advantage of weak people. But then when some real nigga come in that dorm... And they tell him, boy, this is what lit, man, I don't care about none of that. And smack him in the face. Smack him in the face. Knock all his, all of his street cred, all of his, all of his cool points right out of his damn history book in his head. Knocked it dead out when he smacked him. When we seen that, when you see that, I don't give a damn how many people he beat up, wet up, none of that. You see that, everything he ever had in his damn mind just flew right out the window in my eyes. You feel me? Because they pick faces. They, they hunt on the weak. People they know they can get over on. People they know they can take advantage of. That's why I'm saying, don't ever have to go to prison unless you have to. Okay? Don't ever go there just for being a dummy. Don't ever do stupid shit that leads you to go to prison. If you ever have to go to prison, make sure it was for something you had to go to prison for. You understand? Because when you go there, you never know how your bid will turn out. You never know if you're going to have a smooth sailing bid. You never know if you're going to have a bumpy one. Everyone's bid is completely different. Every camp is completely different. It's got a totally different atmosphere and the way they move and things that go on. You might go to this camp and the Bloods and the and the Zoes got it all on lock and the white boys ain't even sticking up for themselves. They don't even say nothing, the white gang. But then you might get sent somewhere way up in the panhandle to where the highest numbers are the white boys. Everything is different and calculated different, okay? And you're going to constantly see people extorting not just the weak and the people who ain't affiliated and don't gangbang, but you will actually see people extort their own kind. They'll blackmail their own kind. They'll know that one of their brothers is smoking Tunchi or he's doing something he shouldn't do, you feel me? And instead of him telling on his brother to get him X'd out, ate by his own brothers, he'll extort him. He'll tell him, well, look, this is what it is. Boy, I want this much right here, dog. You know, I'm finna go to the big man and let him know what it is with you. You see what I'm saying? That's why you gotta be prepared because extortion is definitely going down. Okay, you have people that will make people call home and ask their family for money. Scare the hell out of them. Ask their family for money. It'll be to the point you can't even trust whose jack you get on when you call your family. Because you could get put in confinement or get shipped to a different camp or you can get put in a different dorm. Next thing you know, you talk to your loved ones. They talk about, yeah, I sent that money you were asking for. What you talking about? What money? What you mean? You text me two days ago from that number you usually call from asking me to send some money. Now that man just went behind your back and hit your family member up for some money like he was you. And then, of course, when you go question him, he's going to act like he don't know what you're talking about, play dumb. But then in the back of your mind, what does that make you think? Oh, you call my mom a liar? Oh, you call my dad a liar? My uncle a liar? My baby mama a liar? Whoever's sending you the money, he's basically saying they're lying. Now, who are you going to believe? Someone in there that you know is grimy, got crooked ways? Or even if he don't act crooked, even if he's cool with you. Hangs out with you. Finesse gang and all that. You think your people's on the streets just making that shit up? You think they're just making it up to make you fall out with someone in prison? Hell no. Nah. Nine times out of ten, that's what they did. A snake gonna slither his way however he can. They're escape artists. Put them in a box. Boy, they're gonna find their way out. That's what it is. So you gotta be prepared for things like that. All right? And like I said, they take the most prey is the weak. That's who they take it out on. If you look like sweet money, they, they want that money. That's why my advice to anyone who goes to prison, you walk around flagging, acting like you got it. All these people you see going like this on Instagram, 
spreading all that money and all this shit like that, I guarantee they won't even show them pictures in their photo album up the road. They won't even show pictures like that up the road. Why? Why? Because they're going to look like they got money and they're going to be extorted. And like I said, you ain't even got to be in the same dorm for someone to extort you. And this is something that is never going to stop, never going to change. It's going to keep going on constantly. No matter how much they knock down, how much you can receive. Right now, down here in the state of Florida, it's 100 a week. You can get 100 a week in your canteen. Feel me? And like I said, they calling that shit 60-40. I want 60, you keep 40. Shit. Some people, some people be like 80-20. That's how I rock, man. Fuck, nah, hell, nah, ain't none of that. Nah, 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 ain't none of that. Well, I want 80. I want 80. And then if they get transferred somewhere, they'll, they'll look your name up on their tag. They'll get on the jack right in the dorm. Get on the jack right in the dorm. Start looking it up. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, okay. He had uh, South Florida. Call someone on another jack that has a jack in South Florida. Hey, pop, pop, pop. Yeah, what's up? Hey, such and such has got his name. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, yeah? Yeah, fam. Go get that for me. Run down on him. Boy, he owe me a hundred. Boy, you better collect that. All right, I got you. Say no more. Now it's people after you don't even know. Boy, they coming after you about someone from another camp. And they going to constantly see where you go. Internet access. Even get on a blue phone, a regular prison phone that's monitored. And say, uh... Uh, look my homeboy up, baby. I want to see where he got transferred at. What's his name? And then you say it right over the phone like you're looking up one of your dogs. Oh, he's at such and such. Oh, damn. All right. Damn, that's a fucked up camp. And then next thing you know, hang up, get on the jack, do what you got to do. Hey, call that institution now. Man, there's such and such dead boy. He a paymaster, bro. Straight up, boy. Extort that boy. I told him as long as my name in this prison, boy, he going he gonna, he gonna to have to pay up. If I ain't getting it, I'd rather one of my brothers get it. That's That's how it is. That extortion shit that got so real that people can't even live in prison who don't even deserve to be there. You feel me? I feel like people who got bad charges, you know, sex charges and stuff like that, they should be extorted. The ones that got them fucked up charges like that, yeah, they should. Yeah, they don't deserve to be in there like this with their feet up. Nah, they don't. They don't deserve to be in there enjoying life still. You get what I'm saying? But... It's to the point to where if you're weak, you get treated just as bad as someone with a charge like that. You ain't even got to be weak. You could be a goon still. And they still, 15 of them are going to come on you. Up on you with knives. Anytime you hit the canteen, you come back to your dorm, they come in your room. Boop, up on you. Let me get that. Take your whole canteen bag. It's a robbery, but it's still extortion because they're doing it every single time you hit the window. You get what I'm saying? So my message today is, Make sure, boy, if you live in that thug life and the chain gang and all that street shit is what you, you go by, make sure you're ready for it. Because what comes with that thug and shit, they definitely got a place to send you. And you and you and and it's easy to get in. It's hard to get out. And you may not make it while you're in there. And if you are in there, you ain't going to be able to eat like you want to. There are going to be people watching your pockets 24-7. And then in the midst of it all, you got to hide from the guards while you're trying to make money. So you got to hide from the guards while you're trying to make money, but not show your moves and all your plays and routes to the inmates while you're trying to make the money. You see? So that's why you got to stay woke, man, everything you do. And just, better, you know, be ready for it if you're trying to live that thug life. Well, anyways, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. This one's on extortion, like I said. I just want to break it down to y'all, let y'all know the type of shit that does go on and... It, it is never going to stop. It is never going to end. There is nothing no one could do about nothing. They, they even put people in confinement for extorting people. They even separate people, ship people, move people. It doesn't matter. It is something that is always going to be in prison. So hope for the worst, prepare for the best, and just make sure you never have to go. And if you have any loved ones in there, pray for them and just, you know, make sure they keep their heads up. And I pray anyone that's in there going through it right now. You know, comes home soon if they deserve to be out. All right? But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one all up. Till next time, this frog.